The following is a clip from Primo Radical Uncensored. To watch the full one-hour interview, please go to rockfin.com slash primo radical and sign up to become a premium member. Well, you mentioned abortion, and I did want to get your thoughts on that for a couple of reasons. One of them, uh, just from the Republican perspective, doesn't make a lot of sense to me, um, just given that the economy seems to be crashing right now, right? These okay. sanctions have effectively hurt uh, the Western economies. The ruble is at a, at a two-year high, and it's actually trading higher than, than before the war. But uh, gas prices are going up. Food prices are going up. The stock market has shed about 4,000 points in three weeks. Uh, Bitcoin is actually also crashing. And it just seems as though the economy is doing really bad uh, overall, and it seems to be kind of setting up the Republicans for an easy victory. However, they seem to have chosen this moment to uh, go after abortion, or at least the Supreme Court has. Uh, so I'd be curious on your thoughts on that, first of all. And also, you know, you could marry that with the fact that Republicans are also running against student debt forgiveness in this economic climate, which also seems kind of electorally suicidal when you have everything already going for you. Um, but also, uh, just the timing of this vote yesterday in the Senate, I thought was really suspicious because it came immediately after the aid package to Ukraine, where not a single Democrat in the House voted against that aid package. And they did this vote in the Senate where they knew it was going to fail, right? Like mm -hmm. they knew Manchin was going to vote against it. So it seemed like just theatrics. So just curious on your, your thoughts on, on either of that and just the, the current uh, state of Roe versus Wade. Yeah, I mean, this Roe versus Wade's an issue that the Democratic Party has used against people for decades. Uh, when they want to fundraise, when they see an election coming up, I 100% believe, not that the, obviously it's a real dissension, but that the leak is suspect to me coming from a, a government entity at the time it came from. Um, that's a very, very obvious PR move to me. We want the, somebody puts out a leak. They put out this leak, and now all the attention is diverted from the economic sector into Roe v. Wade. Right? You have Roe v. Wade, and now it's all about abortion versus uh, pro-choice versus you know pro-life. And then you have this never-ending battle that people are never going to agree with. They're never going to agree on this. If you're a staunch pro-life person, you're not going to agree on with a pro-choice person. It, it is a wedge issue. And so it's been weaponized to divert attention. That's one reason. The other reason I think it's because we are coming up to, to midterms and they want some sort of, of a fundraising mechanism to uh, bring some sort of faith into the disastrous uh, Democratic Party. Because the Democratic Party, I mean, Joe Biden's approval rating has hit all time lows. The Democratic Party doesn't have anybody that people really like at this point being associated with the squad is just not attractive to a lot of people, um, even people that are not on the right. And so you have a dying party and and they they've lost a lot of credibility. So they're trying to to use once again, oh my God, these you know awful Republicans, look how fascist they are. It's gonna be handmaid's tale for 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 women from now on. And that's the 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 fascism they're trying to point to. So you don't look at the real fascism that's happening with the surveillance state and the fact that we are having less and less rights to speak out against anything. And with those, to me, that's number one, because if we can't speak out against anything, then how are we going to fight for anything we want? Right. And so they, they're trying to divert that attention and, and fundraise. And of course, we, the reason Republicans are doing this, too, is because they also fundraise off of it. They also have their um, it's like throwing meat you know, to a dog. It's like they, they have this, this, this base that is so pro-life and is more conservative and wants to go back to traditionalist views. So they, they know that. And so they're going to fundraise off of it too. And so what you have is this team sports mentality, mentality, once again, where you have the Democratic Party and the Republican Party, both fundraising off this issue and, and really, is it going to change anything? Is Roe v. Wade really going to be, you know, I overturned? I really don't think so. Um, and I don't think it's because this this thing that the left has lied themselves into, where they want a um, they want more babies in America for to to have workers. I don't really I don't really think they want more babies in America. I I, I think I think we were at a time where it's not about the United States anymore. It's about this global surveillance state that the West in general wants to create this 
ushering in of the fourth industrial revolution where yes, you need people, but also there's too many of us. Um, and so the, you know, that you have this, the, the pandemic kind of showing how so many people were, were discarded, uh, based, you know, on this, uh, on this thing that was uh, this virus. And I'm not going to get into that because I want to get you in trouble, but it was just, it's just very, it just goes right along with the whole, we, we want to focus on, on getting everybody on the same page to, to be, to own nothing and love it. And I just don't see that the Democratic Party is, is wanting to, or the Republican Party just wants to have more more people be born. I don't think the country where we have, you know, uh, ridiculous debt, ridiculous homelessness, ridiculous like uh, shortage of food right now is going to be, it doesn't make any sense to push for, for more babies. I think it's just the fact that they, they know they can capitalize on this. You know, they know that there's a segment that hates Democrats so much, they might just vote Republican regardless. And they know the Democrats know there's a segment that really hates uh, Republicans so much, and they might just vote a uh, Democrat in spite of all the failures of the Democratic Party. So I think I think that's why it's being promoted. That's why it's being used and, and put out in the media. And of course, meanwhile, people are on the progressive end. This is like their number one issue. This is all they're talking about. But they're not talking about, they don't have to then talk about Ukraine and how we're funding the, these uh, neo-Nazis in Ukraine. They don't have to talk about, you know, the surveillance state. They don't, They. it just now becomes once again about the symbolic politics. And as a woman, you know, I, I am pro-choice and I think it's ridiculous because I'm consistent. I am pro-choice, my body, my choice. <laughs> that's that to me is the most hypocritical issue of all my body my choice when it comes to abortion rights and when it comes to ma vaccine mandates i you know i support both and i think there's a lot of hypocrisy on both ends of the political spectrum when it comes to that because they only support my body my choice when it's an issue they they believe in and that's America right now. That's that's I mean, that's the team sports mentality that keeps us voting for team blue or team red. And we have to break that. We have to 100 percent break that because we're being manipulated against each other to hate our neighbors, to hate each other instead of the people doing the manipulating behind the scenes, playing, you know, the the king and the queen on the chessboard, just using the pawns and, and having the pawns kill each other while they sip on wine and dine on steak. That's what's happening. And that's what's been happening for a long time. And it's time for people to realize that they've been played. Jeff, you're right. I had some patron questions for you. And I just want to remind everyone uh, in order to submit questions to all of my guests, please to become a patron at patreon.com slash primo radical. And the first one is from Eric. Eric writes, what is your favorite part of 1984 that has come true? There is a plethora of choices. Uh, mine is the two minute hate on MSM. <laughs> so mine is uh, the Ministry of Truth. <laughs> Because uh, right now we're we're living it, and uh, also the fact that you have the inverted existence of things, where you know disinformation is actually truth, uh, and what they deem as as truth is is actually misinformation. So you have this sort of a this war is peace mentality where right now the United States is sending continuously billions of dollars to Ukraine while their own people are suffering a 40 year high inflation. And while everything is falling apart, the infrastructure, there are so many examples uh, that are that are happening right now, but it's just this whole thing where it's the opposite is true, where you have the, the people that are telling the truth are the ones being silenced and you have the people that are, you know, going off and speaking loudly and calling everybody these um, Putin, Putinists and these uh, Assadists and just these these disinformation people um, are the ones that are lying and and they they are the ones that have the microphone they are the ones that have the most the most power they are the ones that are pushed by the algorithm and it's an extremely dangerous situation to be in because a lot of people don't realize that they're being controlled and it's kind of like in 1984 that you you know you have this fervor and this belief in the system where they're happy to be 
ratting out somebody that might be saying something different on the Russia Ukraine situation. So I, yeah, it's just, it's, that's what it is. Yeah. I think uh, I would have to say my favorite part is the amnesia about how uh, we've always been at war with East Asia. <laughs> it, it seems as though people just completely, Democrats in particular, just forget what they stood for. And uh, now we see them just loving George W. Bush, who they used yeah. to acknowledge was, was uh, a war criminal. Um, so this next question is a little long. It's actually multiple choice. It says, which is the most important and pressing issue right this minute? And there's three options here. Feel free to add a fourth. Escalating tensions with Russia over Ukraine, pushing us towards World War III, or our climate slowly eroding around us, rendering vast tracts of land inhospitable and setting up the mother of all refu refugee crises, or the neoliberal and neoconservative politicians, or ra rather their owners, institu instituting new and old forms of censorship with the help of mainstream media and tech billionaires to prevent an open discourse on these and other problems. Uh, the third one. And the reason being is because I think without the third one, without having the voice to speak out and without having the ability to say what you need to say and di di divulge that information to the masses to talk about these things, you're not going to get any sort of attention to uh, health care, to the environment, to any other issue that you want. You just It's just not going to happen at the, the rate that we need it to happen. Because now we, we, it, we depend so much on the internet. And if the internet is controlled by these corporations and we continue to be silenced to, from telling the truth, we're not going to be able to fight for any of these issues because people don't know how to communicate outside of the internet. I mean, this is this is the age where you have not just email, you have Twitter it has become the uh, the public square, essentially, you have, you know, Facebook, you have all of these channels. And even even telegram is is, you know, a new way people are communicating, but certain channels aren't allowed to be uh, seen there if you live in the United States because of what the um, the government and these big giant tech corps have done. So what we have is the fascism we have the emergence of the corporations with government and that's where we're at and people don't want to see that that's where we're at because it's not as an obvious fascism it's not a, a nazi coming in with a swastika and 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 you know and pointing at people and saying oh you're you're, you're a deplorable you're this you're that physically but it's it's a cryptic type of fascism where it, it's coming from behind the scenes and it's through the creation of laws that you're continuing to lose your your freedom to to speak or to dissent to simply have a different opinion and without that freedom uh it's i mean please try to to fight for health care please try to fight for uh you know against police brutality and and all of that and i think the the foreign policy aspect would have to be uh the second one because all of our foreign policy is our domestic policy how we have been treating the the world and through just subjugation and through bombing and through just lying the empire is lying right our allies just killed a journalist uh the other day yesterday uh, f just it, for being a journalist, right? She was shot by is Israeli snipers. And I, it's just crazy that that is allowed and criticism of Israel isn't. And, and that's what I mean. We're never going to be able to fight for these issues if we continue to lose our voice. So final patron question says, do you have many friends that are not politically active? If so, what do they think of your work? I do actually have uh, a lot of friends that aren't politically active and they do look at what I say and they agree with a lot of it. They just don't, they're just not politically active and they're, you know, involved in their lives and they're trying to work in the system uh, through jobs that, you know, occupy their time. And they don't really know all the things that I know or all the things that your viewers, you, you all might know. But they see that there's something wrong and they see that this doesn't make sense with how much money we're giving to Ukraine. They see that the media lies all the time and that it's not to be trusted. They see that politicians are not, you know, somebody that you can rely on. They don't think that the current system is good, but they're doing what they can to keep on top of it. And that's how the system has managed to keep people from participating in politics because they've been 
comfortable enough to be able to ignore it. But we're going to come to a point, I think, very soon where people aren't going to be able to ignore the, the, the politics surrounding it, the politics surrounding every everyday realities, because it's going to directly affect us. The United States is bringing their imperialism home and it's been getting worse each and every time they've done it. So um, it, it, more people are waking up, I think, and a lot more people than we think see what's wrong with this, the, the system. They just don't know how to fix it. They just don't know what to do about it. So they just continue trying to stay afloat and trying to have their needs met because they don't know what else to do. Well, Fiorella, I really do appreciate your time today. For folks out there who would like to follow you and support you, how can they do that? Sure. So we are on the Convo Couch on YouTube. We are also on the Convo Couch on Rockfin. You can follow me on Twitter. I am Fiorella Isabel M on Twitter. And also we have a Instagram on Convo Couch and a Facebook. So check us out. And thank you very much for the interview. Appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much for your time. And hopefully I can have you back again sometime soon. Thanks again, folks, for watching. To see the full one hour interview, please head over to rockfin.com slash primo radical and become a premium member. Not only will you get access to this episode of Uncensored, but you'll also get access to a new episode of Uncensored each and every week.